Welcome everyone, my name is Rachel Robertson and I am KQED's Humanities Professional Learning Lead. Uh, KQED, as many of you know since you're from the Bay, but if you don't know, um, is the public media station here in Northern California. Um, we do have someone from Portland, Maine, so Joe, you might not know uh, that KQED is the public media station for Northern California. In addition to all the things that PBS and NPR member stations do, we also have an education department that's dedicated to creating content for youth and educators. Um, we have online courses and lots of uh, topics around production and media analysis and evaluation. We have our Youth Media Challenge, which all youth um, from any learning environment are welcome to um, submit to. Uh, and then we have um, PBS Learning Media, which is public media's vast library of resources for youth, uh, TK through 12. Um, and then if you are super on fire for media literacy, um, you can get certified uh, as part of the PBS Media Literacy Educator Certification. All of these um, are buttons that are linked on these slides. I'll just pop the slides back in the chat. None of these are California only. All of them are nationwide, and we hope you check them out. Um, I'm just going to say this because this is just a blanket statement about public media. Um, all of our resources are free and available to you. So we hope you take advantage of them in whatever way makes sense in your context. So today we're going to get hands on. So we're going to talk about audio storytelling as a way to amplify youth voice, um, no matter where the youth are um, and uh, what program they're in. And we're going to actually start making a podcast. Uh, so if you've never made a podcast before, you're about to make one. And if you already have, I invite you to just use this time that you've reserved for your learning to increase your skills in whatever way makes sense to you. Um, and then we'll have some time to celebrate and reflect on ways uh, audio storytelling can be used in your program setting. Um, if you're just joining us, we're really glad you're here. We just got started, so no worries. Here's a link to the slides. And again, we recommend folks click in on them. Um, you can also make a copy and use them in any way that you'd like. So at KQED, our mission, which might aligned with your mission, um, is to elevate diverse youth voices. And the word diverse is doing a lot of work in that sentence. Um, and we mean it in every way. So we mean it racially, culturally, ethnically, geographically, economically, um, you know, any way you could think about, um, we want youth to have a place to share their voice um, with the community about issues that matter to them, about topics they're learning and about stories about themselves and who they are. Um, and I'm just curious to start us off. That's kind of where I'm coming from with this um, workshop. I'm really curious about where you're coming from. Um, in your program or your program setting, um, what does elevating youth voice mean to you? And it doesn't have to be fancy and big, um, but what opportunities do you give young people to voice their opinions, their thoughts, their stories in your program setting or in your school setting or in your community setting? You are welcome to unmute. We're a, sh a small group, or you can pop it in the chat. What does elevating youth voice mean to you? And if you've just joined us, we are just getting started. Here are the slides. So I'm chiming in. Um, just yeah, thanks, Yasmin. <laughs> Um, so for me, it means giving them autonomy and choice. Uh, for us, we we offer over 20 different workshops and they get to decide which workshops they want to attend. They even get a um, survey portion where they can comment and ask, you know, hey, is there a boxing class we can attend for these credits? So this is when I come in and, you know, pull resources from my community and see how we can um, connect those two things together. Awesome, thank you so much for starting us off. It's really important that youth have an, have an agency uh, to make choices and to express what they'd like to do. Other thoughts about how elevating youth voice works in your program setting? Um, mine is kind of like Yasmin's, um, just giving them a voice, um, hearing what they're looking for, finding out their interests, um, things that'll keep them engaged because <laughs> We all know that we can pick the programs and we can pick the things, but if it's nothing that will keep them engaged, we're not giving them their voice. And so here at Redwood Heights, we kind of do a club rush week and um, I let them kind of decide what clubs they want to bring. And then we sign up for the clubs and then we bring them in and then we kind of rotate from the spring, um, from the winter and the springtime. So that's how we do it around here. Awesome, Kenny. Thank you so much. And, and Lisa in the chat also sort of echoes that. 
giving student agency for their own education, forming the learning environment they want to be a part of, right, with lots of choice, lots of input, um, working towards that. Exactly. It's an ongoing issue. Um, and another a person writes, with my students, we have been introduced to new foods to our district, and we've been making sure they tell nutrition services what they want to eat. That very important, very uh, fundamental for people's health to have a voice in what they are uh, putting in their bodies. Awesome. Thank you for that input. And I just invite you, if you haven't had a chance to unmute or pop in the chat, just be reflecting on this, um, because a lot of what we do today, will you'll have many opportunities to kind of think about your setting and how you can use pieces or all of what we do today to help um, youth share their voice literally through audio, but also maybe uh, choose that option um, as part of what they want to learn about. Joe writes, I feel like I have limited ways to get there, but when possible, put decisions in students' hands around curriculum and different directions we can take to achieve the program goals. We are also engaged in service learning project this spring that will be totally student driven. So excellent. Things like student lear uh, st service learning, civic action pro projects, community action projects, right? All of those are ways for young people to look around um, and not only share their voice about what they are spending their time doing, but sharing their voice about what they think should be happening um, in their communities and ways to make it better. Um, and Bill reminds us we need to do things with youth, not to or for them, uh, so true. And with that, uh, let's continue. Um, so the goals today are to explore um, how audio storytelling can literally elevate youth voice, right? because with audio youth are literally sharing their voices um, and how that might work in various contexts. And then you will be get hands on and start making yourself. Um, lots of times uh, the, the hill of technology feels like a mountain. You're like, I've never done this before and this seems like too much to learn. Um, but I'm hoping that you'll uh, realize that it really is more like a tiny hill that an, anyone can scale. So, um, you know, why would we wanna think about audio? Um, hearing each other and talking to each other and connecting with each other really fosters um, empathy, um, being able to hear someone's voice, um, being able to give folks the opportunity to creatively express their voice, whether it's in a civic space or just in a, in a community space, that's also important. Um, you know, project-based learning really connects real life to school. Um, there's a lot of youth are making media all the time in their social lives. Um, and so audio really connects to that. And then the traditional literacies, you know, reading, writing, speaking, listening, things that are really were focused on in a lot of school-based stuff, but also kind of throughout the learning environment. Um, audio projects really build all four of those things because to make audio, you need to read, you need to write, you need to speak and you need to listen. I um, mean, this is one of our favorite quotes, um, you know, it's kind of a, is a high school teacher, it's a classroom teacher, but I think it still kind of uh, applies. This is your annual reminder that you can get students to write the longest, most detailed essays of their lives if you disguise it as the script for a video or podcast. Um, and that's not about fooling anyone, but that's acknowledging that students, when they have that voice, when they have that agency, when we do things with them um, uh, and not dictate what they need to do, um, they all often rise to the challenge in a lot of exciting ways. Um, and so keeping that in mind moving forward, um, we're going to analyze an audio story created by a youth, a young person, um, at the San Leandro Boys and Girls Club in an after-school setting. Um, and the, the prompt for this piece was just, hey, what are you passionate about? What do you love? What do you want to tell someone um, about something that interests you? And so as we listen to Malachi's piece, um, at, again, created by a high school youth in a Boys and Girls Club setting, be thinking, what is the strength of this piece as an audio piece, as opposed to maybe another type of uh, like writing or another type, another medium. Let's hear Malachi. The SoundCloud era was crazy. Yeah, yeah. In seventh grade, I had the time of my life because when I was 13, I was a bit too young to understand the time. But I was still in it. SoundCloud rappers were on the rise, and I was an automatic fan. Dyed, dyed dreads, designer bass tats, and auto tune rappers was the only people I was listening to on a daily. My friends were the same, were in the same thing I was, and we all liked it. Those are the most influential years of my life. Just listening to the music has drawn me to only to not only look. For this um, type of music and culture, but everything. 
these are the these have been bonding topics and some of the reasons why I met one of my best friends today. So yeah. Um catch y'all for sure. All right. So when we listen to Malachi's piece, um, you can unmute or you can type in the chat. What is the strength of this piece as audio? And I hear, I, I appreciate the emojis and appreciation for his voice um, that are popping up. What is the strength of his piece as audio rather than something else that he could have done? Right. Marty writes, you can hear his emotion, right? You hear his passion for this, you know, for what he's talking about. What else is the strength of this piece as audio? I guess his descriptions gave it context and I could really see and picture exactly what he was saying and I think that we all experienced it, but maybe not on his level. Awesome. So he was able to connect with you and bring you to his experience uh, through what he was describing. Nice. Lisa writes, it's authentic and engaged. He is not hampered by mechanics and spelling. It's just all him up front. Right. So he wrote out a script for this, but hey, he's speaking it. So he speaks it in his, you know, his, his voice, um, sharing what he wants to share. Um, other other comments about how he used not only his voice, but also sound and how that mattered in the piece. You will notice that. I will also say that there's a lot of drama uh, in, in the sounds, like his voice went low and kind of like secretive, but also like very dramatic in that sense. Right. So his voicing really like brought across what he like his passion for it. Right. He's like talking about all sorts of different things and his voice goes up and down and he's really sharing something about himself with us. Um, I don't know. You might not have come through on the Zoom. Sometimes it doesn't. But he also put some sort of like a, a few like beats underneath and a few like sort of like uh, I, I, sort of audio reminders of that era of music. Um, and he used them very appropriately because he just took like small clips to illustrate his piece. He didn't try to like run someone's song that he doesn't have the rights to underneath uh, everything he was doing. So he really chose those clips meaningfully uh, to kind of bring us again into that same era. Any other comments about this? And this was audio created in an after school setting. Um, and uh, the prompt was really like, hey, what are you into? Like, what do you wanna share with people? How do you wanna share your voice? So uh, thinking of this as an example, kind of moving forward, you might all already be thinking of ways uh, if you started a podcast club or if you wanted students uh, to make some audio, you know, ways that they could be doing it and things that you could do or say to them to have them think about things they're really into and share that. Um, another thing to think about when making space for audio and after schools is anything that already involves writing or music or creation, right? A lot of personal stories, memoirs, and narratives can become audio pieces pretty easily. Dramas and plays can become audio pieces. Obviously, music, beats, theme songs, um, but also things like how to do something or explaining something, or if you do any kind of journalism, um, that is also something that can be transferred to audio pretty easily. Um, and then if uh, you know folks are creating art um, or any kind of other thing, you can think about how audio is used authentically in the world, right, by writers and scientists and artists and historians. Um, so, you know, we go to the museums and we get those audio exhibit guides, right? And we like walk around and, and watch, you know, look at all the art, you know, if, if there's art being created in your program, you know, one club can create the art, one club can create an audio exhibit guide about the art, right? So that would be just an example of a way audio is used authentically in the world um, that, that students can kind of connect with. There's also sort of historical audio guides that we've all probably used. Are there uh, places in your neighborhood that are historic of historic interest? Uh, can students create something that introduces the community to their neighborhood, right? So there's lots of different ways to use audio authentically as well. So that's another kind of thing to think about um, in terms of how it's used kind of in the, in the real world. So KQED has a youth media challenge um, and I wanted to sort of elevate this. This is for middle and high school youth. 
Um, so elementary youth can definitely do all these things. It doesn't mean that they can't do them, um, but the publishing element um, is for middle and high school youth. Um, Malachi published his piece on our Youth Media Showcase, um, and we have three different projects in three different genres, and then three different audio choices within those genres. So we have a commentary challenge, which is an issue-based challenge where students pick an issue um, and then do an audio commentary about that issue. We have an audio essay. Malachi's piece is an audio essay. Basically, he's just like sharing a first person, you know, sharing something that matters to him and telling a story about himself, his identity, his community, his family, his culture, you know, kind of whatever it is. Um, and then a podcast would be more informational, um, you know, sharing something about something that a student has learned um, or something about the community or the history or, or, you know, interviewing other people. Oral histories come under the podcast framework. So um, the cool thing about the challenges are, and this is, these are just some like examples. They all come with lots of information for you. Um, uh, all of our student facing um, curriculum is in English and Spanish. All of it is Google Docs, so you can just make your own copy and change it however folks need. So we have lots of examples from all over. These are some more audio essays. Um, if you're looking for something to tie into the election, uh, this is a great one, the Call for Change Project. These are some great examples of that. Um, informational podcasts. As you can see, everything comes with a teacher toolkit. Um, but the, it's the Youth Media Showcase that's kind of uh, a cool thing. Uh, to share because this is a place where young people in middle and high school can actually publish their work at any time during the school year nationwide. Um, and so it's just something we just want to let you know, because sometimes when we ask you to create things, uh, they live very locally uh, just with us. Um, and this is a way to sort of put them um, out into the world um, so that they can be shared more broadly. Um, and we have, as you can see, young people from all over the country Okay, Maine. All right, there's like a school in Maine over here. Joe, you can add that add to add to Maine. Um, there's lots of different um, opportunities also on the showcase for young people to encounter perspectives from students in different places. So California is very represented, but we have North, South, Central everywhere. Um, but we also have Texas and Florida and North Carolina and Illinois, right? And all around. So students can see what young people in other parts of the country are creating. Um, and so again, this is linked um, in the slides, um, but I'm just gonna like pop in the showcase to the chat real quick, just so you can um, just have that to see uh, how audio projects and video projects and other kind of projects can work across the country. So that's just to let y'all know, and these are so, just some more examples, um, just to know that this exists. And Let's jump in, right? So now you know sort of the background, you're doing some thinking. Um, before we jump into actual audio production, I'd love to hear um, either in the chat um, or uh, on mute, what kinds of things you're already maybe thinking of that could work in your setting. So go ahead and share that because we can all kind of learn from each other, hearing what each other has to say about how this might work in your program setting. Go ahead and pop that in the chat if you're having those thoughts or you can unmute. What are you thinking? And if you're not inspired yet or aren't sure, that's okay too. Um, specifically for my uh, service project, um, I think this could just be an additional, you know, layer. I think the aspect of like, I don't know, I do work with elementary students, but they could put together, you know, they could put together something, but I think having that avenue of like, this can go further out and like also like another layer of participation for students who maybe are disengaged with certain aspects of the project could like kind of, so everybody's got to do something. Exactly. No, that's a really great idea. Excellent. Thank you for sharing, Joe. Other thoughts? Lisa writes, with attendance being such a big issue, it'd be interesting to hear from students why they are coming to school and then sharing out their stories with peers. Yeah, positive. Marty writes the website posting so their voices can be heard in our community, right? So you can post on your own website. They can submit to the Youth Media Sh Showcase if they're in middle or high school. Um, and you, yeah, kind of getting a sense of how our young people not only can tell us and kind of participate in our programs, but also like kind of make their voice heard more broadly. Lisa writes, I'm new to this. I mean, one through the elementary students, it can be introduced maybe starting a club for those that are interested. Yeah, that's a great way to get started. And again, all of this material and all this curriculum can definitely work for upper elementary. 
um, and, and definitely can be modified. So there's lots of stuff in the, the deck, uh, these slides that you can then repurpose if you choose. There's no reason um, if you don't work with middle or high school youth why you can't do something a lot like what we're going to be doing or a lot like what these projects guide students to do. And as we know from our elementary school uh, folks, they really kind of look up to the older kids. Uh, so playing them some pieces like Malachi's or others from the showcase can also inspire them uh, to jump in themselves. Jesus writes, last year we had our TK kinder students do our weekly news and it was shared throughout the school. Oh my God. Uh, if you have a link to that, please drop that in the chat because I cannot imagine the cuteness that would, that would, oh wow, that's amazing. Um, thanks for sharing those ideas. And again, let's keep sharing. I am, I am not an expert. I am a, a colleague with you on this call. So uh, we all learn best and we learn from each other and what each other is thinking about our context. So just don't feel uh, don't hesitate to jump in. So we're going to start uh, doing some audio production. Some of you might have already done audio production before and you are pros. If you are, great. I invite you to just like use this time to increase your own learning or think about ways that you could make a model for what you want maybe young people to do. If you're brand new, hang with me because we're about to get started. Um, so a podcast is basically just narration plus soundscape. Um, back in the day, you know, this is Orson Welles that wore the world's broadcast that made everyone think that the Martians were actually invading, right? Like he needed like a room full of people. He needed an orchestra. He needed actors. He needed sound effect people to like literally like clomp the shoes on the wood. Um, but now we don't have, we don't need that. Um, we have all the tools that we need to make a podcast, like literally on the device you're on now. Um, and so it really has opened up, and this is probably why there are so many podcasts, it has opened up the field um, for all sorts of folks, um, you know, pro, pros, amateurs, youth, older folks uh, to jump into podcasting because it's just very much more accessible than it used to be. We are going to do today what we call mini podcasting, and that means that the script that you write is going to be pretty short and you shouldn't overthink it. Um, because that, that means that the time for audio production will be much longer. Um, and so we're going to jump into many podcasts with these prompts, although you are adults, so you can write about anything you want. Um, but these are some prompts that makes for some good mini podcasts. Uh, three things. So introduce yourself and just share three things about you. Um, what's your call for change? So we're all sort of thinking about the issues, especially this election year. So if you have an issue you care about, uh, write a you know, couple sentences about uh, what you would like to change or see changed in that in that issue. A fun fact that you know or teach that you are always kind of pulling out at various events. Uh, what, what is that fun fact? Tell us about that. If you really knew me, so maybe sharing an aspect of your identity that you want to share um, or uh, tell us about a moment you'll never forget. Um, but again, these all of these prompts and all of these scripts uh, should be about three to five sentences. So um, if you write a little longer, that's fine, but like we're really focusing on short scripts uh, and long time for audio production. So I'm gonna uh, show you what we mean by mini. And I have a, a, a model that I, I, I'm gonna model what we mean by mini. Um, this is a issue that I care a lot about. Um, and I created a very mini podcast that just tells what I want to have changed about that issue. So I'm gonna, use my mini podcast as an example. So as you can see, this is what you'll be creating. This is Soundtrap Under the Hood. It's a, my a mini podcast is about 34 seconds um, and it's about five sentences. And here's what it is. I think Congress should pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and protect voting rights for all Americans. This act would reinstate preclearance. This means that states with a history of voter discrimination would need federal approval before making changes to their election laws. It would prevent states from enacting laws that many have already passed to make voting harder for voters of color, young voters, and disabled voters. If we don't have voting rights, all of our other rights are at risk. That's why we need legislation to protect voting rights for all Americans. All right, so you saw it. that was very short. That was an, I, I in fact voted today. <laughs> I got my mail-in ballot and like dropped it off today. Um, so this was a very short piece that basically was an issue I care about. It was my call for change for that issue. I, I, ta I talked a little bit about why, but that was it. 
Like I, I could have written, you know, an entire essay about this topic, but I didn't. I just kind of kept it to a couple sentences, starting with my call for change. So that's just an example of a, what, what we mean by mini, like really short. But you saw, and we're going to get into how this works, how I was able to layer sound and narration together to put that piece um, and, and make that piece. So that's what we're about to do. So that's sort of an example, a model of what we're where we're going. So right now, I'm going to set the timer here for five minutes. And again, it's short because the script is not supposed to be very long. Um, and what you need to do is grab a piece of paper or pull up a blank doc or whatever it is that you want to do. But we're going to ask you definitely to write a script. So write something so you have something to record. Um, and so you can choose any of those ideas uh, from the prompts. Um, and if you're stuck and it's just like, you're like, I am not feeling this today, I have a sentence frame. So you can just fill out the sentence frame about a fun fact, um, but you can also choose any topic that you'd like. So right now we are all writing together for five minutes. I'm setting the timer. You are writing your mini script and we will get back together in five minutes. Alrighty, so hopefully you have at least a few sentences written. Again, wherever you are is exactly where you need to be right now. It's totally fine. Um, but you probably have a few sentences written. Maybe you have more than five. That's also fine. Um, about a topic, uh, one of the prompts or a topic of your choice. So we're going to take the script um, and we're going to start uh, jumping into audio production hands on. Um, but before we do that, why don't you just post really quickly in the chat the topic that you chose. So that everyone just like all 16 of us just pop in the chat uh, what topic you are planning to write about. It can just be one word, two words, great. Sewing it for art expression. Thank you, Yasmin, for starting us up. What else? How I lost my nose, wow. Other folks. One particular moment from my teaching career that stands out. Thank you, Lisa. Keeping our space clean. Natu nature fun facts. Animals that sleep standing up. <laughs> These are great. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Oh, so great. I, I'm just looking back to make sure that I didn't lose any. So definitely keep this coming. And then if you just joined us, we're really glad you're here. It's okay. We're just about to jump into audio production. Kaylee, my irrational feel of alligators. Oh my God, same, same. Oh my gosh, when I went to Florida, I lost my mind. It was so weird. Marty, a fun fact that students find interesting that I am a gamer. Exactly. Oh, adults are cool too. Um, so you can see, don't move to Florida. I am not moving to Florida. Oh my God. I'm like, there is an apex predator in the drainage ditch right now. And no one cares. Anyway, I, I just can't even. Um, Disney isn't just for kids, Karina. Also, I was in Florida because of Disney actually, but whatever. Um, okay, so th this is great. As you can see, oh my God, I love yours, Kenny, as well. We have so many different topics, right? And so in a group, a small group like this, we still, I have so much diversity in how we wanna share our voice. And obviously youth will be exactly the same, right? You ask young people what they wanna share, that you'll have like a bajillion um, different things that they are willing to share. And hopefully they'll get excited. Uh, you'll be excited about all the things that we're gonna learn about each other, just like uh, I am right now. And maybe you are too. How I almost lost my vision to one eye and our cheerleading our dance. Either of those would be amazing. Um, hopefully you didn't almost lose your eye because of cheerleading or dance. So this is great. So we have lots of topics that we're going to bring into our production. So we are going to make some media. So all digital audio software basically creates an audio studio in your, in your computer. They, and all of them do the same thing. These are three of like kind of the biggest ones. Audacity, Soundtrap, and GarageBand. Um, all of them do the same thing. All of them allow you to upload files that you create yourself if you want to go that route. All of you also, all of them also let you record directly in the tool, which is what we're sort of going to be focusing on today. You can edit sound files, you can add multiple tracks and layer sound and music. All of these do the same thing. So any 
audio tool that you want to use and any audio tool PS that you already know how to use, please feel free to use today. Um, if you are looking for one, um, we demo with Soundtrap. And really the only reason that we do that is because Soundtrap is a web-based tool that works on Chromebooks. And many programs and many schools have access to Chromebooks, whereas they don't necessarily have access to computers with a hard drive. So Audacity, for example, is a completely free tool. All you have to do is download it, you have it forever. It's like very retro in its presentation, but it's a great tool and it's really high, high end. Like it, it's, it's almost pro level, um, but you have to have a hard drive. To, to have it and you have to have the ability to download, which a, a lot of schools are also blocked from doing. Whereas Soundtrap, it's freemium and we'll tell you how to get it for free because we do have a partnership with them, um, but it works on Chromebooks. And so that's really, that really is what made the decision for us um, in terms of what we demo. But again, any tool that you use is totally fine. So if you're like, I already am really good at this one tool, then use that one tool today, it's totally cool. Um, I just wanted to be transparent about how we make that decision. And it's really, it really comes down to this third point right here. So um, we would love for you, if you do not have a tool that you already know how to use, to make a, an educator account, which you can do with any web, web any email address. Um, and you need to go to Soundtrap Education. It's really important that you go to the education site and not the general site. If you already in your personal life have an account on the general site, that's totally fine. You can use that. Um, but if you're creating an account today, um, create one on the education site. If you ever get to a point where they ask you for a credit card, you are not on the education site. So back out and go to the education site. I'm going to show you on the screen. So you're going to go to education, right? It's going to say education. <laughs> that's what it's going to say. And what you're just going to do is start a free 30-day trial. If you like Soundtrap and want to use it with youth, I can set you up for the whole rest of the school year for free. So it's not just 30 days, it's for the rest of the school year. If you don't want to use it and it's not for you, totally fine. Your account will expire in 30 days and there's no loss to it. Um, so this is what you're going to use if you're just today getting started and you need a tool to use. Um, if you already have a tool, please use that tool. So go ahead and create an account. You can enter any email here. It doesn't have to be a school email, although that helps. Um, and then anyway, just create the account and I'm going to flip back. So everyone's doing that right now, or you're just dialing up the account that you, um, you're logging into the account that you use for audio creation. If you do that in Europe for any reason. All right. So I'm just going to give folks about 30 more seconds. It might take a little longer than that. If you have any issues creating an education trial account, just let me know. It kind of takes you through a whole thing. You're going to create a classroom account. If you get to that part and you're not sure what to say. But basically, you're just setting yourself up so you can you can try stuff out today. Because because the LOP, you know, has kids from more than one classroom. Is it OK if we do? Will they let us do it if we put you know, school wide or district wide, or does it need to be classroom do you think, for this? I think for this one, that's a great question, Sherilyn. If you have the authority to create a school or district wide account, uh, go ahead. If you're not sure if you have that authority, just make a classroom account for now. Thank you. Yeah. And again, this is just to get you started. If you would like to start the process of downloading Audacity, you can also do that. Um, if you have a hard drive and if your kids have access to computers with a hard drive, but this is just a quick thing to get us started. Um, and as you're doing that, I'm going to give an audio demo of Soundtrap. Um, but again, all of the, the moves I'm going to be making are available in any tool, right? So recording into the tool is all tools do that. Layering music and sound, all tools do that. It might be called slightly different things, but basically once you know the vocabulary, it will transfer to different um, programs. The cool thing about Soundtrap too, in addition to the fact that it runs on Chromebooks, is that it has a, a pretty extensive loop library with uh, copyright free music loops already like in the, in the tool. So that's kind of nice. Other tools kind of, you have to you know, upload what you want, which is possible and totally fine, um, but it's kind of nice that this has it right in the program. So I'm going to go to Soundtrap, and you may be where I am now, which is, 
uh, I'm going to just save this and get back to my dashboard. So you might be here. Um, and to create a new project, all you do is you enter the studio. And again, I'm going to do this kind of all at once. So what I recommend is just watching me. Don't try to do it like with me um, because you'll, we'll have a big chunk of time that you'll have to, to do your project. Um, but right now, just kind of watch. Um, and you can see here on the dashboard, there's lots of resources that you can, like if you're like, what did she just do? Um, and on the slide deck that um, is in the chat, there's also lots of resources that kind of remind you all the steps that I'm going to do. So you enter the studio to start a new project. That's a fancy way of saying new project. And then you have this choice. Um, we're going to choose podcast. You could choose music, um, but today we're going to choose podcast. There's not, uh, there's not a lot of meaningful difference between these two choices, but we're making a podcast. So we're going to choose podcast. And then we have our blank slate of a studio space. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to record our narration track because all the music and sounds that we line up with that track, we'll, we'll need that track to do that. So you're gonna read your script first into the tool. And the way that you do that is to add a new track. You can add it here on the left. You can add it here in the center. You're just gonna add a new track and then you're gonna add your voice. Now, all of you are already connected to a computer right now where you can speak. And, and so your microphone is activated and your computer is on. Um, so you're gonna activate this. It's gonna to default to your, whatever you have. Uh, make sure, and if you need to change that around, you can. And then you're just going to press start recording. I would leave all of these things up here, these knobs, pre-gain, clarity, pan, just leave them the way they are. Just leave them. Just leave them alone. Um, and then you can start recording. So you just press record. Hello. I am doing a soundtrack demo for the lovely people at the Cannes Symposium. Yay. And thank you. All right, so I just recorded, and you can see up here, the waveform generated. So, um, great, Marty asked a really good question that I, Marty, I will 100% answer that after this. Um, and so you have this up here, and now you get out of the recording box by just, there's this really subtle X in the left hand. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make. They're like, how do I get out of the recording? You just press this X right here. This is right here on the left. And then that drops. And now I have my narration. So the playhead is this purple thing that moves about the timeline uh, like a cursor. So let me just listen back. Hello. I am doing a soundtrack demo for the lovely people at the Cannes Symposium. Yay. And thank you. All right. So I have this big kind of awkward pause between these two things. You are able in these programs to edit tracks. Um, and split and put things together again. So think about the analog days of the cassette. Uh, it's like the only digital. So if I wanna cut out that awkward pause, I'm gonna find that spot in my waveform. I am gonna click on the track and I'm gonna go to edit split region. I'm not actually cutting tape, but I'm cutting tape. And then I'm gonna move the cursor to where that pause ends. I'm gonna do the same thing, edit split region. And then I'm gonna highlight that and delete it and move my track back together. There will be a visible uh, break just to let you know that you've made that cut. It does, does not come across when you listen. Hello, I am doing a soundtrack demo for the lovely people at the Cannes Symposium. Right, and so if I'm like, oh, that I cut it a little close, I can always back it up and try it again, right? There's lots of things that you can do, but the, um, it's edit split region is what you need to look for if you wanna cut within a track. I can also make the track much bigger by zooming in. These are very subtle little uh, magnifying glasses here on the lower right. I can zoom in so I can really see where that pause is and where my voice starts and then I can make a finer cut. Um, so that is edit split region. I can also do that back here if I wanna take out the yay and just go to the thank you, that works too. Um, so now let's think about layering some music or sounds. The sound loop library and Soundtrap is here on the right. It's the, the uh, musical notes. If you push it, it pops out. Let me just show that to you again. If you push it, it pops out. And it auto automatically brings up all the sound effects. Um, and there are so many sound effects, as you can see. So um, I might want to have like 
clapping hands, right? Or applause. Let me see if it's clapping. So I can search sounds, clapping. Yeah, baseball crowd clapping in rhythm, crowd clapping with trumpet fanfare. Yeah. So I want that one. So I'm going to just double click on it and it's going to jump into my, it's going to layer in the next track automatically. I didn't have to open a new track. I didn't have to do anything. It just popped in automatically. Now I kind of want it to start where I say yay. So all I'm doing is selecting it and moving it about the timeline. I want to keep it on its own track because I want to be able to control the volume. So if it's on its own track, I can treat it like a separate piece. I don't want to kind of move it up to join my narration. There's no need to do that. Keep it on its own track. So I'm going to kind of put it here. And then I might want some music. So I press the loop library again, get rid of the sounds. And then like so many musical loops generate, like so many that you'll, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to time box your youth and be like, look, y'all have 10 minutes to find something because otherwise they will be listening, you know, the entire time you have together. So what I like to do when I search this e immense loop library is think about the mood of the piece, right? So I'm, you know, pretty jazzed today. I'm happy to be here. So I'm going to have happy and then I'm going to have, okay, maybe happy piano, happy piano. Oh, look, it really limits the sound choices. So then I'm like, huh, that's cute. Okay, that's fine. I kind of like that one because it's a little higher. So again, I'm going to just double click. It's going to generate into my piece. So now I have my narration, a lot of sound and a sound effect, right? So each of these tracks can be dealt with separately, which is really important for volume. Because for example, if I press play now, the music's going to be too loud. Hello. I mean, it just like drowns out what I said. So on the side here, I can lower the volume of the piano track. Right. And so I can make it quieter. So it doesn't like overpower my voice. This is very important. This is why we keep things in separate tracks. Um, same with the crowd clapping, right? If I want to go up and say, symposium. Yay! And thank you. Right? So I can, that is, that's pretty, that's pretty good volume wise because my narration track is turned up pretty loud, which is what you'll want to do for sure. So now everything's like different lengths, right? So we know how to do this. I'm going to highlight this track. I'm going to go to edit, split region, going to split off that region. I'm gonna highlight this track. I'm gonna to go to edit split region. I'm gonna delete, oops. I'm gonna delete these tracks, right? So now everything lines up and then I'm gonna to listen to it again. Is the volume too loud? I'm gonna adjust the volume. And I might wanna like fade in and out. So there are these little tiny buttons. They're little tiny, all you have to do is click on the track and there are these little tiny buttons that allow you to fade in or fade out if you want to get fancy. There's a, a way to get even fancier if you want to explore this three dot menu here, but I'm going to leave that alone unless you know, you know. So um, I can also fade in and out. I can also change the volume. And then let's hear what we got. Hello, I am doing a soundtrack demo for the lovely people at the Cannes Symposium. Yay, and thank you. Right, so whatever, that was chill, but I might want to fade out the music. I might want to turn this up a little bit, right? So you can just play around with it and, and see what makes sense. Um, those are basically the features. Another thing that's really cool is that I can generate, if I want to, by coming down to the lower left, a transcript of my voice track. Now, the reason that you'd want to transcribe your voice track, I will show you. If you have a longer voice track, um, it generates pretty quickly. You can edit mostly <laughs> your words in the transcript rather than doing it on the track. I'm going to show you how that looks. So if I want to just cut out where I said yay, I could highlight it on the transcript, press delete, and then watch the sound waveform up, up top. <gasps> what? Did you see that? Let me back it up so you can watch it again. I'm gonna delete where I said yay, which is here. And then boom, 
it cuts it out of the track. Now it does not do this perfectly and we're gonna watch and see that it does not do this perfectly. Hey. Right, so it got like the first part of my yay but not the last part of my yay. So it's not always perfect, but the cool thing about it is when you do have a longer script, like Malachi's script was probably about 150 words. When you have a longer script, um, it does allow you to move the playhead. Usually it moves the playhead if you double click where it is in the narration track so that you don't have to like listen and like drag your playhead and stop and start. You can just go to the transcript and it will go to that place in the track. See how that playhead's moving around as I'm highlighting words. So it's a nice, a nice way to find your spot if you get stuck. To get out of the transcript function, just hit the transcript function again, and it disappears. Um, again, if that is like way too fancy for you to deal with right now, that is totally fine. Um, that is the, the soundtrack basic. So um, what we're going to do now is... I am going to answer Marty's question, which is, so Soundtrap, so at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a code that will allow you to have Soundtrap for free for the whole rest of the school year um, for you and up to 500 kids. I hope you do not have 500 students that you teach, but there might be 500 students in your program. Each one of them can have a license and you can have a license for the whole rest of the school year for free. That's a partnership we have with Soundtrap. If you were to like buy it on the open market, it's about $250 per for, for 30 kids. So it's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive. It's kind of like in the mid range. Um, and a lot of districts have access, um, but you now have access for the whole rest of the year. So um, we as public media really don't wanna be demoing things that people then don't have access to, to, to us that feels icky. Um, and so we've managed to work it out with Soundtrap so that educators uh, who connect with us get it for free for the whole rest of the year. Um, so that's nice. And, and that'll happen at the end. But you do have to create the educator account first, the, the trial account first, in order to get, um, in order for the subscription to be extended. That's why I had to do that at, at first. So what we're going to do, we have a long time. We have a, we have a good like 25 minutes uh, to play and to experiment. So you've already written your quick script. Your, your, your job is to get as far as you can on this checklist as possible. So the first thing you're going to do is hit record um, and record your narration. The second thing you're going to do is then edit it. You might not need to edit it because you don't have a long script, but if you do, that's cool. You edit it. You might want to generate a transcript. You might not. It's up to you. Add a track of background music. Maybe add you know just the volume. Maybe get really fancy if you want to add some sounds. And then you'll share it. Um, and I'm going to show you really quickly how to share your piece. Um, you need to exit out of what you've been working on. So you're going to save it, demo can, and then you're going to go to this exit. It's very subtle. It's a soundtrack often, it's very like little tiny exit at the end. You're going to get back to your dashboard. And then what you're going to do is look at the three dot menu here, and then you're just going to share a copy. So that's how you're going to share your link. Um, if you choose to share it. Is it different for Audible? I'm not sure. I've never used Audible, but if you want to, sh a, a lot of programs, a lot of things that you do, they allow you to generate a shareable link. So just generate a shareable link and share it at the end of the 20 minutes. Um, and the share doc, uh, Nat has popped it in the chat. Um, and so you, if you have the slides, you also have this link. These slides are also help slides. So if you forget how to hit record, all you have to do is access that slide, go to help, and it guides you through the process of how you start recording. So all of th this whole slide, which is slide 27, is one big help slide deck uh, that reminds you of all the steps that I just showed you how to do. Um, so you're equipped for that. Um, and thank you, Nat, for putting the slides back in. Again, this is slide 27. I'm going to set my timer for 25 minutes. And again, you're going to get as far as you can. Don't leave the Zoom unless you have to, um, because sometimes computers can record into a tool and also still be on the Zoom. Some computers count, it just depends on, on your computer. Um, but definitely uh, we're gonna come back here at 11.20, actually I'm gonna say 11.22. So 1.1, one, one, two, 2.2, two, uh, we're gonna come back together, maybe share some pieces um, and then close together. So I'm gonna set my timer now and you all are 
jumping into Soundtrap and playing uh, as much as you like. I am going to go on mute, but if you have a question, please do not unmute. Uh, please drop it in the chat. track. I feel so bad. Um, but hey, we see some folks in the share doc, which is great. And if you are not in the share doc, that is okay. One, this doc is open to you. So I hope that you decide to post your link once you're finished. Two, 22 minutes is not a lot of time um, if you're just getting started. So it's no problem if there's nothing, you have nothing to share yet. But again, we hope that you do share. Um, if you're in the share doc, stay in the share doc um, so that you can add your piece um, and as folks are coming back together, is there anyone, Kenny or Crystal, are you willing to have us play your piece um, and celebrate you? Yay, Kenny, you got the thumbs up. So what I'm going to do is click on this link, open Kenny's piece. Kenny, do you want to like give us an intro to this? Looks great. Uh, no, it's okay. We can just hit play. <laughs> okay, let's just hit play. All right, let's hear Kenny's piece about, I think, children being the future. That was the topic. I believe the best thing in life is about empowering our children and the future generation. Giving them the tools and the life essentials that they'll need, not only to prepare them, but to keep them equipped and grounded in an ever-changing world. They are our future. Awesome. Please drop your appreciations for Kenny's piece into the chat. Uh, pop an emoji on your screen. Excellent job, Kenny. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and I love the layering and the use of tracks and sound. Awesome. Great. Uh, Crystal or Joe, are you, uh, we have some time to share some more. Oh, Joe's giving the thumbs up. All right. Let's, oops. Let's see. Here we go. Joe, you want to intro yours or just press play? All right, we're going to press play. Look at this. All right, get ready. A moment I'll never forget is when I had an in-home jump roping accident that shattered the light above me and cut my shoulder deeply. I knew I needed help by the size of the cut and the copious blood flow, and I phoned my dad who lived down the street to come and get me. While we were in the waiting room and during the pre-assessment, bloody towel on my shoulder I was informed and you're also missing a piece of your nose I was horrified I soon got a mirror and found it was just a small divot that is not very noticeable unless you look very deeply I like to share this with students in the game two truths and one lie as they almost always think I'm missing a piece of my nose is a lie and I get to tell the story once again Excellent job. Please post, uh, drop your appreciations for Joe in the chat for that amazing story. Now we all know uh, how to play Two Truths and a Lie with him. Excellent use of sound effects. I love all the different tracks you experimented with. Excellent. Oh, good. We're getting some more folks in this in the share doc. The beauty of this share doc is that we all have access to it. And so what I'm going to do right after this is go listen to everyone's piece. Um, and, you know, de definitely let's listen to folks' pieces, uplift them. Um, and if you don't uh, have yours in yet, it's not too late. You can drop it in later on. So thank you so much, Kenny and Joe, for being willing to share. Um, and Crystal and Lisa and anyone else who's jumping in, I cannot wait to listen to your piece. So we're just going to wrap up a little bit with some reflection. Um, you do not need to answer all of these questions, <laughs> but you can pick one of them. And I'd love to hear folks unmute or just pop in the chat um, something about the process. You can answer the process question, um, or you can choose to answer uh, what you've learned and are taking away back to your program from this uh, workshop, um, or something that you might want to learn more about. So again, pick one of the reflection questions. You don't have to do them all. You can unmute or pop in the chat uh, what you're taking away from this. I'll go first. Um, go ahead. Of making my own penny mini podcast, um, I'm gonna 
kind of exposed myself a little bit. Um, I cheated a little bit. I wouldn't say cheated, but um, I have experience in doing this already. I have a YouTube channel and I'm working to release my podcast this year. Um, so I've been, this was kind of like a great um, two in one, you know, a personal use. And then also my kids have been saying at my school, like, Mr. K, we want a podcast. We want a podcast. And so it went perfect hand in hand. Um, I, they were really excited. We paid two truths and a lie to. And one of them was that I'm a YouTuber content creator and that I have a podcast coming out. And then another one, they were like, well, you're not a YouTuber. And then I pulled up my YouTube video. So they were really excited to see that. And I told them that journey and that story. So yeah, this was really two and two. And um, I'm excited to bring this back and explore and have fun with the kids for the rest of the year. Awesome. Any other reflections? Again, you can drop them in the chat or on mute. There's always so much to reflect on um, and we're coming up. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, that's my radio. Okay, no problem. So this is the moment we've all been waiting for, which is how to extend your uh, license of Soundtrap if you choose. And if you don't, you do not have to do anything. You can just let it expire. Um, Joe's and Sherilyn, thank you for uh, dropping in those reflections. So you are gonna go to this site. You need to be logged into the account you just created in order for this to work. So you'll go to this site, it's slide 30, um, and you will type in KQED. KQED does not have a U. Many people add that if they're not familiar. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll hit and then you'll go back to your, um, you know, your dashboard and you'll refresh it. And all of a sudden it'll go from 30 days to however many days we have until the end of school year, which is the end of June. Um, so you could just go ahead and do that if you want. Um, loving these reflections. Um, <laughs> Corinna, I think you're all of us in terms of getting used to hearing your own voice recorded. That's something students will also kind of struggle with. Um, and so, yeah, this really connects and folks are connecting this with a lot of different uh, ways that it, it, it applies to your program. Um, if you want to publish to the Youth Media Showcase, these are some just help slides that you can refer to. Um, on the showcase, the cool thing is that teachers create an account, not youth. Um, so you'll get a code and then, then your, your youth will use that to submit. Um, and then we have step-by-step -step instructions and a template. So if kids fill out the template that they can just have everything ready to submit. That's if you want to do that. We hope you do if you uh, are a middle or high school provider. Um, and then there's lots of reasons to publish that we've talked about. And this is on the showcase or in your own space. It's really great to have uh, give students that opportunity to share their voice more broadly. And then finally, KQED, me and my colleagues, we do a lot of online PD um, kind of all the time. So, so uh, it usually is, unfortunately, during the after school hours, uh, but not all of it. Um, and so if you want to uh, register for some stuff coming up or tell uh, educators you work with, uh, these are some things coming up. If you're in the Bay, we do have an amazing audio uh, workshop with the Cal Academy of Sciences about climate action uh, coming up on Saturday, March 9th. Again, if you're in local to the Bay, this is an amazing opportunity. So much fun. Um, and we'll just really uh, have it great. And, and you get to then hang out at the museum afterwards. Um, so it's a hell of a, hell of a deal. Um, this is my email, I'm a real person. It was wonderful to meet you um, and best of luck. Please reach out if you have any questions about Soundtrap or implementing audio with your uh, young people. I um, really hope to see folks on the showcase if that works out, but otherwise have a wonderful rest of the conference. It was great to meet you. Thank you, Rachel. It was great meeting you. Yay, thanks Kenny. I really appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much.